Hello there, my fellow children of chaos and the forest, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. Today we'll make a stop among the rather understated and underappreciated Beastman faction. It has been a long time since I talked about them, so I figured I could make at least one video on some named characters. Now, many of you who are knowledgeable about Warhammer Fantasy have probably heard about characters like Morgur or Kazrak Wanai. They are, after all, among the most famous Beastman characters. However, it turns out that there are quite a few other, less famous, but equally interesting characters. And so for today, these are gonna be Thorox, Ungrol Forhorn, and Slugtang. All that being said, I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Our first topic of today is Thorox, not to be confused with this, the 40k Thorox. Thorox, also known as the Brass Bull, the Slaughter Horn, the Blood Beast, or the Brazen One, is an almighty Minotaur chieftain, responsible for leaving a trail of destruction all across the lands of the great forest of Talabekland. It is not only the war herds of Gors and Angors that are rising up in greater numbers than before though. All across the province, the legend spread about this giant bull-headed monster with the body of living brass. It is told that this fiendish warrior marches at the head of a column of armed minotaurs a mile long and that whenever the scent of flesh is carried upon the wind, whether from the greenskins, human towns, or beastmen warherds, the column breaks into a frenzied stampede to seek and destroy them. Riders following this trail of devastation have reported its passage through market towns, armored barracks, flagellant camps, temples and riverside wharves, leaving nothing but ruin and great smears of blood. Of the inhabitants of these unfortunate places, there is invariably no other sign than the odd scattered boot or broken sword. More disturbing, all the outriders swear that the Brass Bull's army is heading directly for Talibheim, and growing larger with each passing week. But let us start a bit earlier and see how Thorax got made. Thorax is an unstoppable force, a roaring, snorting engine of destruction virtually impervious to physical harm. Cast in the form of a grotesquely muscled doom bull, Thorax looms over all his followers, a mountain of living brass with curving bladed horns and a gnashing metal maw that constantly drools with gore. The brass bull, though, was not always a metallic monstrosity. Once he was a fearsome chieftain of the Minotaur tribes, enforcing his brutal will upon the lesser beasts of the forest by killing any creature who dared meet his gaze, and then devouring them alive. The brass bull was merciless beyond measure, and the ground at his feet was always slick with freshly spilled blood of both friend and foe. And so it was that one night, an emissary of the Dark Gods crawled into the mortal realm from the devastated remnants of one of Thorax's rivals. The Hellborn Nightmare was sinewy and crimson-skinned, coiled with unholy power, and it met the gaze of Thorax with his hollow black eyes. Unfortunately for it, that was a costly mistake. Before it could utter a single syllable in the dark tongue, Thorax grabbed it by the throat and bit off its head. There was a moment's silence, and then a violent thrashing as Thorax spasmed and shook, seized by a vision of the world awash in blood and afloat with corpses. Thorax roared and screamed, biting and clawing at himself in the convulsions before taking up his axes and slaying every member of his own tribe. But he didn't stop there. For a year and one day, he raged across the lands in a blind rampage, killing every living creature he could find. Tribes of beastmen, covens of witches, strigani caravans, mercenary ogres, empire patrols and proud knights all fell to Thorax's wrath. When he came upon the Vale of Lidberg, he killed so many of the citizens that a river of blood was born at his feet. Finally exhausted, Thorax collapsed in the crimson stream, and he would have died then and there, for his energies were completely spent but the Dark Gods still had a use for him. Under a scarlet moon, Thorax was reborn, 
he rose up and bellowed his defiance, blood cascading out of his now brazen frame, for the gods had rewarded his fell deeds with a body of shining metal. No more would he tire, no more would he have a moment's respite from the rage consuming him. Thorax drank deep of the gory river he just made, and the blood sluiced and boiled inside his brass body, giving him unholy vitality. Clashing his rune-inscribed axes together in savage pride, Thorax set off once again and began the slaughter anew. This time he didn't stop, and the brass bull will not stop until somehow he is put in a grave. The second of today's characters is Ungrol Forhorn. Also known as Blackheart, Horn's Thief, or the Spurned One, Ungrol Forhorn is a being consumed with spite and bitterness. It is said there is no more hateful a creature in the entire old world, for he has been cast out of the ranks of both man and beast. Such was the scale of his transgression that he became something of a legend and to this day he leads a stealth-styled band of warriors as their beggar king, marching at the head of a group of outcasts, mutants, and heretics who have nowhere else to run. Curiously, even for a beastman, Ungrol was born with two separate heads, each one possessed of a singular ugliness. The mewling beast was greeted with utter revulsion by his original human parents, and they cast him out into the woods to die. But he survived subsisting on a diet of grubs and roots until he was strong enough to hunt and kill. Ungrol eventually found his way to the Manblight tribe, where he joined the ranks of the Ungor. Although he only had the most rudimentary horn buds, the fact that he had two heads was good enough, and he was tolerated as a beastman. But still, Ungrol did not find peace. The other Ungors were jealous of his mutation, and the other gores mocked him and beat him for having such small horns. Every single day was a new set of demeaning and horrible trials for the creature they nicknamed Fourhorn. It was on one dark night, covered in bruises and bleeding from a dozen wounds, that Ungrol had had enough. His tribekin were snoring loudly after a drunken feast, which Ungrol was not allowed to attend. He took up a great rock, and approaching the largest of the sleeping figures, he bashed the chieftain's brains out. The Bray Shaman was next, throttled by Ungrol's sinewy hands. He would carve off the magnificent horns of the two tribal leaders with his knife, strapping the chieftain's horns to one of his heads and those of the Bray Shaman to the other. Resplendent in a new set of headgear, Ungrol capered in the moonlight gazing with manic glee at his shadow and singing four horn, four horn, four horn, over and over again. To kill a chieftain outside of a challenge was bad enough, even for beastmen, but to kill the Bray Shaman was a grave, grave sin. When the tribe discovered the atrocities Ungrol had committed, they chased him for a night and a day, but Ungrol was ever sly, and he evaded their pursuit in a labyrinth of dark caves. It is said he still dwells there to this day, consumed by jealousy and enmity. Over the years, his legend spread, and through channeling his vast reservoir of hatred, he has come to be a warrior of some fame. Many Angors have joined his cause, and now he commands an army of mutants, outcasts, and monsters, which sometimes raid the lands of men. They take out their hatred upon anyone they can catch and they keep human captives like cattle in the depths of the labyrinth of the spurned. The third of today's creatures is the one called Slugtongue. The repulsive monster known as Moloch Slugtongue, also called the Famine Fiend, the Barren One, or the Lord of the Black Harvest, is said to be anathema to any cultivated life and natural harmony. Everything humanity does to harness nature Every act of order intended to travel the chaos of the wilds can be undone by a single gesture from Slugtongue's blackened claw. At first glance, Slugtongue can be mistaken for a creature called a Death Devil, because his head is little more than a leering bovine skull and his emaciated body is covered in liver spots and coarse white hair. Yet on a closer inspection, he teems with life, albeit of a basest kind. He is host to colonies of fat black lice, hopping fleas, bloated ticks, 
wriggling worms and stink-bodied cockroaches, which infest every crevice of his wretched form. Even worse, he is surrounded by an aura of numbing cold, his stinking breath coalescing in ever more disturbing shapes, and his tattered robes hung with jagged icicles of filthy and unimaginable fluid. As repugnant as Slugtong can seem at first hand, the signs of his passing are just as disturbing if not more. With a single whispered phrase, he can unleash the power of blight upon the land and those defending it. Ravenous living hurricanes of skull-headed locusts whip and tear across the crop fields, reducing them to shocking ruin in seconds. Rivers of virgin meltwater turn to bile at the sound of his gurgling, phlegm-choked laughter. With a single word, the skies will fill with writhing clouds of transparent maggot things that rain down into freshwater lakes like a living hail. Storehouses full of golden corn and sheaves of barley are open to reveal nothing more than rotting black sludge, and barrels of ale yield nothing more than a thick gruel of infected spittle. Each of these vile transformations is pleasing to Slugtongue for he knows that those on the brink of starvation are soon driven to acts of desperation. It is not long before those living under the dark blight of his presence marshal their armies in their desperate need to lift the curse ravaging the land. But those who follow Slugtong are ready for them, knowing full well that war follows famine as surely as winter follows autumn. When the armies of the starving and frightened march to confront Slugtong, they are met by hordes of well-fed, hot-tempered and battle-ready beastmen, who will descend upon them from every direction. It isn't long before these bestial warbands are hacking apart and trampling the weakened fools who dare to stand against the curse of Slugtongue, while mocking laughter echoes upon the rot-scented winds. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these obscure ish characters of Warhammer Fantasy for today. Fun fact, Torox is actually playable in Total War Warhammer, although he is part of a DLC. Also, in case you want me to cover other characters like Morgur or Kazrak, do let me know. Anyway, what are your thoughts on today's disturbing characters? Which one did you find the scariest or the most interesting? I definitely look forward to reading your thoughts on these unique beastmen in the comments below. As for me, I think Slugtongue is by far the most sinister of the three. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please consider clicking the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have a healthy and awesome day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.